So recently on the channel, we've had heavy industry, medieval fantasy, high tech after high tech after high tech, but you know what we haven't had? RimWorld. RimWorld is supposed to be our uh, story generator about settlers forming a colony on the frontier, a sci-fi take on the Wild West with, with ranching and cattle driving and bandits with the occasional city slicker and death bot along the way. Sometimes things don't have to be an all or nothing world ending scenario or some big undefeatable enemy or some meta reflection on self can just be RimWorld. So here we are, the default scenario on a mostly default planet with most importantly, three randomly generated default settlers here to build a frontier town. Now the mod pack itself, I'll admit, is enormous, but every mod is a small change here, some quality of life there, no big magic, no scary faction, no big premise, just more RimWorld in your RimWorld. Ranching, trading, diseases, normal run-of-the-mill tech, and most importantly of all, character development. Though, it wouldn't be entirely true of me to say we don't have a goal. We do, and this goal might be the most important goal of any series. The fluffiest muffalo. Rim Rims far and wide, welcome to RimWorld Ranch Experience, or whatever I decide to eventually call this thing. I was going to call it RimWorld Back to Basics, but I didn't want it to imply that maybe I was playing vanilla RimWorld. God forbid. But, but ultimately, that's what this series is. We're going back to basics a little bit. It's RimWorld, but taking the basic concept of RimWorld and modding it out. Now, from a meta perspective, there's another reason I wanted to do something like this. Over the past few months, we've had the release of Vanilla Expanded Empire, Vanilla Expanded Sanguifage, Vanilla Expanded Androids, Alpha Mechs, Aerocraft frame Framework, Hospitality Casino, Storefront Spa. I could go on. So many great mods have been released, and I've missed all of them. There's not going to be some big guiding thing this time, except building a, a pretty standard RimWorld colony here on a planet with fairly standard RimWorld mods. There's nothing crazy. There is, however, maybe a slight change of pace. I have to do a little world building here and there, okay? It's a difficult time to be a, a farm man, a cattle boy here on this little rim planet because for some reason, all the cows keep disappearing. Some people think it's bandits. Some people think it's the ogres. There's a bunch of strange factions of otherwise perfectly very normal upstanding civilians who couldn't possibly do anything wrong. No, no, no. And as always, if you want to play along, collection, load orders, everything you have any down in the description we have a tech support over on the discord if you need any help with that whatsoever be it installation or any weird things you find along the way and speaking of character development who have we got in our colony this time uh, that's a question to you because i'll be honest i don't know they're all randomly generated that's the best part oh no Oh, we're in for a good time then, eh? For our three starting colonists, and apparently a Rottweiler called Tatiana, that's nice to have, we have Yakov Whitehead. He is a background soldier turned medieval minstrel, a singer on a simpler planet. And the stoner trait, I presume, explains that one a little bit more. Melee of Nine Double Passion, we've got ourselves a sheriff. A colony defender, a, a frontiersman who can fight off all those damn bandits. And the dog's already ill. Are you joking? The dog's got allergies. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Neville Dunn, Troubadour turned Bull Leaper. That's amazing. 14 animals, double passion, and he is nimble, but a heavy sleeper. He's a work hard, play hard kind of guy. And then finally, we have Emmy Young herself. Emmy old, because she's actually 67. Oh, she was, or perhaps maybe, still an herb world sex slave. She's got a lot of cooking. 15 cooking, double passion. Wow. Beautiful mountain lover, diligent student, and steadfast out of interest here oh shit done neville dunn is emmy's grandson look at that best friend grandson and companion she's got another granddaughter out there in the world somewhere which might be neville's brother and then they're both kind of familiar with yakov here who's already been elected county sheriff talk more about that in a moment and because i'm all about story progression character progression they're going to be the big driving factor not some crazy situation we have, very simply, a fluid ideology. Rootin' tootin' sheep lootin', we are farm life. And that's all there is. Farm life, farming is central. We get a plant specialist, an animal specialist, and then we have some very uh, questionable backstory for why we're all here in the first place. The ideology, honestly, very straightforward. Slow research, but we respect hard work. We, we work hard, we play hard, and we work the farm, and we just like a good, wholesome life. But we force children to work. <laughs> and that, to be honest, is basically everything, right? Now, there are two pretty important systems I'd probably explain here on out. We've got animal genetics, which is going to allow us to breed maybe the strongest hunting animals. Oh, maybe not a tortoise, but you get where I'm going with that. We can build the fastest of mounts for giddy up. That's going to be pretty relevant. We can breed the nicest pack animals. Again, a hedgehog, probably not relevant for that one. More importantly, leather. 
Leather, as far as I'm concerned, will tell us the fluffiest muffalo. I'm going to breed the fluffiest of all the muffalos. And in fact, there's a good candidate on the map already. Maybe what we want to start our breeding... What do you call it? A herd. That's right. A breeding herd. The planet itself I've kept small, but the factions have a lot of character. They're all pretty distinct. You've got your standard sort of empire faction, so we can see what the empire has in store for us. You've got your standard Rimworld Outlander faction. We've got industrial bandits. We've got imps. We have a pig union, cannibal pirates, ogres, and, and fey. And then in the cold frozen north, we have some Granlin. We have some Vikings. We have some insect hives over in those mountains. And then treasure hunters. And to add to that extra character, that extra springboard that we can get a story going here, everybody has a, uh, a custom ideology. They have a custom faction name, a custom leader, everything you could possibly imagine. Oh, annoyingly, you can't see all my amazing uh, faction leader names because they've been covered up by the 123 personality mod. But hey, keep an eye out for it when we get when we get quests and, and trade requests and that type of thing. I suppose without further ado, should probably start working on a farm, eh? Oh, the other final thing I should explain, though it's probably not super relevant right now, is we have politics every season so every 15 days somebody is going to be put up for election that depends on their opinion of one another and their relations and and what kind of skills they've got and everything else one of them will be elected colony leader so i think we need to build a mayor's house most importantly but i want everybody to have their own separate house you know it's, it's going to be very character driven right it's going to be very character focused what better way than to give them their own house rather than just a, a bed in a room as they normally tend to do I, I copy and pasted generic buildings. Nah, we're not doing that. I've actually got a lot of decoration mods to try and make them look more like houses too. Stairs, handrails. We've got eaves. It's gonna look really nice. You've got to trust me. I do like build base. Because we've got a big mechanics or big game change, I thought we're probably going to end up with quite a big colony this time. And I've added this mod that lets it do automatic work for us. Don't have to spend forever ticking through everybody's bloody work tab whenever we need it. For the time being, though, I am going to turn that off and just take everything manually while we get set up. You never know when bandits might turn up. Your god darn cattle rustlers. Oh, that's cool. Not only can you disable it. Again, this is another mod that I totally missed, right? Not only can you disable it, per pawn, but you can also disable it for certain job types too. Say, for example, I don't want everybody fishing, so I would turn that one off. Oh, that could be an interesting idea. Now, I don't normally use uh, vanilla expanded books, right? Just never really used it, and I'll be honest, I don't really know why. So, why not have it so whoever's elected governor, in this case is Jakob, why not have them do the governance and also prioritize writing a lot? So they're sat in their mayoral office putting out books for the rest of the colony so they can learn from their skills. In this case, this guy can teach everyone else good melee skills. I don't know. Do we even want to start? There's a lot of rich soil around this lake bed, so we could go down here. What we do have this time as well is that terraformer mod where you have to go to places to dig up the soil. So that way we could caravan out there into the world, dig up a bunch of rich soil, bring it back to improve the farm itself. A bit of fertile soil here. You know what? That'll be it. That'll be the starting point where we where we break ground. Oh my god, that's a lot of plants. Where do I even want to start? Corn? Good old-fashioned American corn. Yeah, I think we'll go with that one, thank you. Now remember, this is more about ranching than farming. We do have things like variety matters too, so we can't just throw down a field of corn. People get very upset if all they're eating is corn all the time. We do, though, have a mod called Hysteresis, which allows us to... Uh, uh, basically, what will happen is, let's say, for example, we're growing fungus, right? When we have less than a thousand fungus, it will start growing fungus. It will enable the growing zones and people will start seeding it. If we have over 2,000 fungus, it will stop sowing it. And then it will stay within whatever the previous one was when it's between that. Does that make sense? You'll get it. Pretty sure these enormous flowers give wood, right, when we cut them down. I give a good amount of wood, too. Hey, this is nice. Big old flower house. Bog walls or timber frame walls? Whoa, what the hell do you need for that? You need loads of stuff. Hold on. Uh, let's have a look. Clay, wood, and hay. Where do I get clay, though? Dig for clay. Oh, we can just do it in any mud. Oh, sick. Throw down a digging spot near the water. Then we can say dig for clay. Sweet. Okay. And it's only 50% flammability. Who wants to be digging for clay? Emmy, you only got to digging for clay? No sign for... Oh, it's crafting speed, right? Uh, done. Congratulations, my friend. Holy crap, that's slow. But you know what? Let's just throw down some basic structures for the time being. We can we can wait on that. Log walls are good enough. You know what? Now might be a good time to have a look over the characters because Yakov can't do anything. So he's stoner, prude, and asexual. Capable of skilled labor, hauling, caring, and social. Right, so pretty much all he can do is hunt and clean then. Fair enough. Okay, done. Nimble, heavy sleeper, and asexual as well. Cooking, plants, animals, crafting five... Medical of seven, that's actually kind of useful. Emmy is beautiful mountain lover, well, you're in the wrong neighborhood. Diligent student, steadfast and straight. Cooking 15, double passion. 
And again, not massively good at anything else. She's got a passion in plants. So we could potentially do something with that. It really is a slow start when you haven't got a magical bug lady with 500% work speed and eight arms. Oh, a triple bunk bed. Oh, well, that's pretty good, given that this is just a temporary thing. I'm going to have him sleep in the stockpile. It's that or they have to sleep outside. And that all connect up to the same... End table, eh? You beat me to it. Nice. So long. Come sleep with Grandma. <laughs> it's already cursed. It's already gone down a strange route. Grandma's moved over to the top bunk. That could cause some confusion. Emma, you need to pick a bunk and stay in it, my friend. What's the matter? You don't like seeing Grandma's enormous ass? Why on earth have you taken your trousers off? Please put some clothes on, madam. Oh, shit. We've already got fighting in the colony. What did she do? You're as useless as tits on a bull. That is pretty useless when you're ranching, to be fair. You find that out the hard way. I need a gun, revolver. Oh, now that's rootin' tootin' cowboy shooting if I've ever seen it. We got a bolt action. That's way more rootin' tootin' cowboy shooting. Get that one. Is anyone else good at shooting? Shooting of five, shooting of nothing. Okay, done. Come grab the other one, my friend. Why have we got... <laughs> Why have we got psychoid leaves? Who bought that along for the ride? Done is too heavy. Oh my god, he's a heavy sleeper. He's a heavy sleeper. Oh, shit. That's the worst trait in the game. It's immersive storytelling, though, isn't it? Oh, we've got saloon doors. Look at this. I would have never made a colonist in a thousand years with heavy sleeper. Ugh. I've got to build a saloon, haven't I? This isn't intentionally supposed to be the Wild West, but it's it's Rimworld. Those are kind of indivisible, right? We're not, we're not specifically going for that, but I have had a lot of steam stuff. Like I said, I filled out the industrial level of tech without going any higher on the high end of things so cataphract armor is still the best gear in the game and all the imperial stuff is basically the best stuff you can get industrial steam engine oh that's cool and i've got to throw down windmills this time haven't i oh there's so much we can do so much stuff that would normally go completely ignored speaking of which how are you doing down there oh, look yakov's not up to much right now he's not doing anything for the colony he's not helping out at all but when we get raiders turning up we're gonna be glad we've got this guy oh my god that's actually really upset him look at that thinking about what happened with emmy oh god we can't already... They are very good friends, though. Oh, he likes her a lot. But she doesn't really like him. It's bad news for Dunn either way, because either Yakov and Emmy become bitter enemies, and they're the only other two people he gets to hang out with, or they become significant lovers. And the bad news is they got a bunk bed. I, think, I guess a top bunk would be better at that point. Where are you going? Hey! <gasps> Yakov asked Emmy to hang out. Emmy agreed to it. Oh, this is nice. This is this has a lot of potential. Come on, you've got to be friends here. Come on, we need this for the colony. You don't have to become deep lovers. I just want you to at least become friends. Jesus Christ, that was fast. Raving cannibals. Hello. Moe Ogakob. Yakov, this is your job, my friend. You've spent the last two days doing absolutely nothing. Oh, that's bloody rude. Wait, Yakov, scream about this being private property. This is this is my... What is it they always say? This is my... This is my... My domain? That's far too verbose. My land? Well, it is. It is now. Oh, okay. Careful, 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 careful. Careful, old man. Uh, we could do run and gun. Just be careful, because he's not going to be a very good shot with that. Come on. Do we want to take this person as a colonist? Hang on. Before we go too crazy with it. Mining? We don't really need mining. you got a strong back, and we do respect that in the farming lifestyle. And they're dead. <laughs> well done. Good work. Well, it's a good job I didn't want to recruit them, eh? This is, this is far too difficult. What the hell am I going to call this place? We could call it... We could call it Farmville. <laughs> <laughs> That's really bad. Really just terrible. On, I got, I've got done helping out. Oh, granny on the farm and just pushed him a little bit too far. I'm going to be the first to say it. This farm was far too big. <laughs> I think we'll cut our losses a bit on that one. We planted some corn over there, but that's fine. This is, this is more than enough for three people, okay? We got packaged some other meals to last us a while, and then whenever things get a little bit out of hand, we can send Yakov out there to go hunt some varmints, which in this case is an anaconda. Got some horses, but I want to tame those so that we can use them as caravan animals. Muffalo? Again, I want to tame those so that we can try and breed the ultimate muffalo. I guess it's hedgehogs for dinner. There we go, there we go, everything's fine. They weren't very happy about having to share a bunk bed, so I thought, you know what, we've settled in a bit, we've got a bit more wood from, from preparing the farm. I can throw them down some bed. Oh, hello. Combat supply from the Sacrilege Hunters, how are you? Quest available, caravan adventures. A sacrilege hunter caravan is approaching. It seems rather well equipped. Might be worth checking out what they're doing here. If you missed this chance, wait for further caravans. Most make seek contact beyond just trade. Hello. How are we doing? This is all about exploring mods that I've missed. And you might remember the Caravan Adventures mod that I touched on very, very briefly a long time ago, but never really finished. There's a big old quest mod that has a, a, a whole story associated with it. And I thought, what better 
than this series to have a look. O'Connor waves and comes closer. Hey you, we've been traveling for weeks now. We were hoping we could make a few days rest at your village. I'm afraid I've just taken apart the bunk bed. We won't trouble you, of course. We just need to relax for a bit. It's been hard on the road. O'Connor shivers. Sure, we don't mind. You're welcome to stay a while. O'Connor gives you a tired but beautiful smile. That's kind of you. She takes a deep breath and her glance and she glances over to the village and beyond. To the shed and beyond. This is a fantastic village. It fades in with the beautiful nature all around perfectly. How are you guys doing here? Well, we can say. That's, a, uh, that's very nice of you to say. Thanks. We put a lot of work into it so far. I hope we'll make it through the winter. We're not going to. We're all going to die horribly. I'm sure you'll be fine. We start building a settlement not far from here. Hopefully, Jack runs out of booze soon so we can finally plan out the rest of the buildings. Our constructors, our constructors are anxious to get to work. Anyway, you should come visit us when you're done and give us a chance to repay you guys for your hospitality. You notice they're kind of starting to relax and smile. Thanks. We'll be happy to come visit. What brings you guys here? Or, we might spring by, but I've got to go. Duty calls. Yeah, good luck on your travels. Hey, nice to see you. Oh, look at that. We got some good relations with our neighbors. That's nice. God, God they are well equipped, aren't they? Holy crap. I'm going to get them waking up earlier. You can't sleep in till 8 a.m. You got the whole day for that. Right, let's make them wake up at 4. That's good old fat. It's good for the, it's good for the character. Character building. Not like actually in-game character building, but, uh, you know, conceptually. I think before I dive in building the mayor's mansion, I want to throw down a couple of shacks just for them to... Just for them to have each, right? So let's throw down a little shack for Emmy and a little shack for Dunn, and then Yakov gets the mayor's mansion. He's going to be waiting a while. You can just sleep in the stockpile till then, as far as I'm concerned. My worst enemy, box houses with basic wooden floors and wooden walls. Oh, trust me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Oh, God, this is horrible. I'll let you have an end table and maybe a dresser, but that's the end of the luxuries we can afford right now, I'm afraid. Hey, we got a gift from our new friends, too. What is that? Makeshift pistol and bone shiv. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Where'd you put that gun, though? Hey, where'd you put your revolver? Revolve? Revolver? You just left it on the floor. You just left that down there, did we, done? Come on. Are you getting existential again? It's four clay, a wall block, and we need hay for it. So you can forget about that one, I think. I'm going to build me a mayor's office. How big do we want this? We're going to go crazy with it. You know what? Let's give the mayor's office a little bit more room. I'll be honest. I'm thinking like Mr. Burns' mansion. Oh, that's going to be enormous. This is very silly. Rest available, the solitary praetor. Do we even want to be friends with the empire this time? We do get development points for it. Oh, rootin', tootin', sheep looting. Ah... Uh, I mean, I could be persuaded because there's so much of, of, of vanilla Empire Expanded I haven't seen. And I mean, Yakov, maybe the power's gone to his head a little bit. Sheriff Yakov, also Baron of the Empire or something like that. Sure. Sure, why not? The man-hunting duck. We can deal with a man-hunting duck, I think. Skelnos, how you doing? Oh, God, I thought you were trapped there for a second. Yakov, it's time to actually do something useful around here. Come save us from this man-hunting... Hello? Ray Wolfen? Was that not the name of the person who... Murdered me in the last series? <laughs> America. Makes you proud, doesn't it? Brings a tear to your eye. Yakov, you have one job in this colony, and that's shoot the duck. Yakov? Okay, stand still, stand still. Oh, he just needs a, just needs a little help. He's an old guy. He's 55. He's practically one foot in the grave. What was here? Hello. Oh, look at that. That's bloody fancy. Yeah, off you go. Get out. Thank you. Although I could have really done with your help building up. Say, you know anything about building mansions? Given they're from the Empire, you presume so. Holy crap. Thank you. Wait, did that say the fallen <laughs> empire have sent you a package of aperitif? Oh, good. Non-alcoholic, pleasantly light, citrusy, and slightly bitter. Mmm. Apparently, it prevents gut worms, food poisoning, infections, carcinomas, chemical damage, and chemical damage. It prevents that. Huh. Yakov's about to start microdosing aperitif. <laughs> Give him a silent. A silent for the sheriff? I like that idea. Let's take it. Oh, damn, news spreads fast in the empire, eh? Whoa, look at those. What is that armor? Hello, Janissary Helmets. Yeah, more stuff I haven't seen. Man, that looks great. Rather questionably, let's begin the bestowing ceremony. You know, like they did in the Old West. It's all it's all coming back to me now. It's all very similar, isn't it? Want to see Burden? Burden would be good. Okay, we had a ship bestowing ceremony, but look at this. Possibly the greatest moment in Yakov's life, a bestowing ceremony. It allowed them to, to develop the neat trait. But we can swap that out for Perfectionist. They work slower, but of course the work is better. They are beautiful or they are jealous. Wow, that's a hard one. Um, 
Strikes for perfection in his work. I like the idea that the power goes right to his head. And now he's a perfectionist. He's going to take his time about it. I mean, look at how long it took him to kill that damn duck. Done. I'm happy with that. Oh, I didn't check what he actually got for a Psy power. It was Burden. Amazing. That's the best one for Colony Defense. You want to, like, stun. It's crap. Gentle Touch of Done makes Turkey 1 cleverly choose to join the new arrivals. You tamed a turkey. Actually, I could have you out there taming a lot of things. Maybe a bit more bloody useful than a turkey. I mean, this might be a mistake. I'm going to say all the horses, all the muffalo for sure. I guess we'll take a couple of other turkey. Why not? People farm turkeys, right? Successfully tamed mare one. Done. I've had you doing the wrong thing, my friend. I've had you digging clay all this time when you could have been building the actual bloody farmer. The only reason I didn't is because I didn't think we had food. Oh my god, he's got sunflower seeds. Right, every sunflower we've cut down is giving us something to tame the animals with. Oh, this is amazing. We need cowboy hats. We need cowboy hats and sombreros. No, Mare 2 is pregnant. Oh, and he tamed Mare 3. Is this getting out of hand? I haven't even got human food. You've already tamed five horses. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm not complaining. We also have boundary training to stop the horses running off when we don't want them to run off. I mean, look, I guess the horses we could train to do whatever. Who needs mechanoids and all sorts of horrible little hauling bots when you could just have a nice horse? Or a hauling turkey. Ah, oh, sod it. I'm in. All in on the hauling turkey. Do you have a mod that makes animal taming a little more flexible? Funnily enough, you can't normally train turkeys to hunt. Although, they are vicious. We need geese. Now, we're totally out of meals. So, guess who gets to eat a muffalo? Or maybe a horse, given how many we've got. I have to borrow some of the mare's walls so that we can throw down a, a butcher table. And maybe even, dare I say it, an oven if I can find the damn thing. Okay, there are no components. This is fine. This is fine. This is how the frontiersman had to do it all those years ago. This is absolutely acceptable. You're not going to die from eating food cooked on a campfire. I mean, you might. You very much might. You're probably not going to, but the food poisoning is going to be out of hand. How is that you're cooking? Fat. You're just cooking 25 fat into four meals. That is absolutely disgusting. Oh, no. Just spoonfuls of warm fat. What the fuck is going on? Mare 2 attempts suicide because of epilepsy. What? What's happening? The horse has depression. <laughs> What the fuck? Why is this happening? I mean, I know animals can. I just I don't, don't know why I've been cursed with this. This is supposed to be a nice idyllic farming series and you're hitting me with real life tragedies. Oh, for fuck's sake. And now a goose is attacking us. I told you those gooses can't be trusted. <gasps> He's hunting on horseback. He just needs the cowboy hat. My God, this is all coming together. Sorry, I ignored that quest and all of the... Oh my God, what the hell have we got going on here? Roy... Ooh! What the hell is even this? Is this vanilla empire expanded? Oh my god. So these are all the yeomen across the world that we can invite as visitors. Oh, and then you've got their their honor. Right. Oh, that's cool. We've got acolytes. Man, they're dressed well, aren't they? My god, this is some interesting clothing you've got going on there. We've got praetors. Look at them all. They're all so weird. We've got barons. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I imagine the Empire is supposed to be in law. Just all a bunch of insane, self-aggrandizing crackheads. Oh, okay, so right at the top there's going to be the High Stellarch, right? Whoa. Hello, sorry, that's Emperor of the Fallen Empire. Hello. Damn, this is cool. Okay, so that's the Great Hierarchy, and then we see the, the permits that we can get here. Fair enough, and we can view permits per character now, rather than having to click on them. Okay, fair enough. Shields, arrow drone, orbital slicing beam, whatever the hell that is. We can summon... Janissaries, get Glissable Medicine. Oh, there's a scroll bar. Oh my god, there's a scroll bar. Imperial Regiment. What the hell? Ten Janissaries and six Cataphracts. That is nuts. Hyperweave Devil Strand is cool, because obviously they're hard to get, especially Hyperweave is impossible to craft. Vassalage. Settlement produces survival meals for their overlord. Oh, shit. Man, this is crazy. And we've got an honor system, which we haven't got anything yet. Okay. Available to be equipped on your nobles, because we're too low rank. Fair enough. Wow, this is nuts. Okay, sorry, yeah, no quest tab. Wow, there's so much going on. Uh, Yakov's Yeoman Ceremony. Yeah, we've done that. Thank you. I wanted to have a look at this one. O'Connor sent a letter. This is from the caravan from before. Requesting help urgently. Dear Yakov, I really hope you get this letter in time. We might all be dead. We came across a large shrine. As we cracked it open, massive mechanoids streamed out. We got away, but ever since huge hordes of mechanoids keep attacking our village, I'm sending, us this, I'm sending this letter in the hopes that you can make it here in time to assist us. We're preparing an escape, but we have to wait for our reinforcements to stand any chance of escaping with our lives. Please help us in those dark times and venture to Errorhurst at haste. 
I hope you guys are doing well. I really miss talking to you. Oh, that's nice. Um, jump there and assist before it's too late. Do I? I can wait on that though, right? I don't have to like immediately go over there. Because I'm not gonna lie to you, I've got a naked man with a jacket on a horse. I don't think he's gonna help out against bloody mechanoids. Stupid freaking horse, for God's sake. <laughs> it's good medical experience, I can't deny it. Oh God, now you're training the dog. We haven't really got enough food for that there, fella. Ooh, hey, that's looking pretty nice. A long way to go, yeah, so we've got to throw down pillars, we've got to throw down floors, we've got to make it look far nicer than it is currently. This is kind of weak so far. Treehouse builder named White Springtail is crashing nearby. Hello, this seems like it might be a good way to get some friends. Uh, well, excuse me. Give it your bed a second. Oh, hang on. She'll be fine. There we go. I'd actually really like to recruit you with 10 plant skill, but I don't need to make any more enemies. We've already got cattle rustlers about. And the worst part is, I think at this point, I've actually got cattle. Holy crap. Look at these damn horses. I don't need this many horses. I've only got three muffalo. I'm going to scale back the training a little bit. That was too much. It's far too much work for Dunn to do. So we're just going to have him train the dog, I think. Get that on hauling to help out a little bit, but we don't really have that much to haul right now. This is going to be, I think, Mayor's House Stroke Town Hall Stroke Maybe Ideology Room. Just generally like a community center type thing. Oh, and then you've got to have it like a, like a standard Western movie town, right? Where you've got the big road running right through the middle of town, leading up to the big building, and then you have buildings on either side. The saloon and the bank. There's always a bank. We've got to have a vault in it for people to try and rob. I think the farms and everything else can go right at the back. The farms, the cattle, everything. The ranch itself. Then we'll run the whole town on on that kind of vertical line through the middle. I like that a lot. It's a gift. I can build a stove now. Oh, hello. Uh, they're afraid to enter my territory because of Nord's people and there are no guest beds. Oh, but it's a fallen empire. I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to send them away for now. Re refuse them until I have guest beds. That's a good idea. We we've got to be known for our hospitality, right? Oh, look at that. Three components. We've got to use those wisely. We had an election. Oh my god, he was unassigned. Emmy has been elected as the new county sheriff. Vox Populi Vox Deo. Thank you. The focus skill is construction. Great news. And you know what? God damn it, I think Emmy deserves to be mayor. What's Yakov done for us? Huh? He shot a duck. Great work. Yeah, really fantastic. Meanwhile, she's built this whole bloody city. I mean, forget about just the mayor's house, which is very unfinished. She's done everything. Well, I mean, the rest of it's also unfinished, but that's not the point, damn it. Like me or I won't build your houses is a fantastic platform to stand on. We've got a big mansion up here, and I haven't got much to fill it with, right? So I think we'll throw down some beds up in one of the spare rooms. We can turn it into a hospital. Maybe a school will be good eventually or something like that. For the time being, though, I'm going to let them sleep up there. Even though it is the mayor's house. I mean, the mayor gets a bedroom all to herself, which I feel like is, uh, that, that's enough of uh, an election promise alone. No, 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 don't build these. We're going to tear all of these down now. Turkey 2 has stenocardia. For God's sake, I'm going to need a full-time vet in this place. Which, to be fair, I mean, we're ranching. Makes a lot of sense. I'll admit, I've slapped down fields that might be a little bit too much. They might be a little, little over the top. I feel like we could put a bunch of bunch of livestock in here, all the buffalo, whatever. Then I got another field on this side, the same size. We'll fill with horses and turkeys and all those other animals that definitely can't live together. Then in the middle, cotton, corn, and tomatoes. The, the old American staples. Well, I do appreciate the the quite chill, quite calm first episode without having to juggle manic raiders. It is a bit of a pain in the ass trying to do it with only one person who's capable of growing plants, building buildings, and doing just about anything useful. <laughs> Asking ye shall receive. We've got an ogre. Imagine how much an ogre would help out. Um, okay, let's take this carefully. Let's just be very careful about this because I really do want to take them alive. I'm actually going to slap down. You know what? Let's just flip that into a hospital. Get a little closer. Hit it with the burden as soon as we can. And then let's just carry it back. Are you are you any good, though? Po po pork. I love you, Popork. You might be my favorite colonist yet. Yeah, I am going to get you as a colonist. Quick sleeper, kind, world-weary. A giant cannibal. Well, we can sort that out. That's no problem. 15 mining, totally useless in this settlement, of course. For construction. Ugh. Yeah, there's a chance we could train you up. And, like, eight cooking, we could definitely do something with, too. Are you dying, though? Everyone else is dying. You're stage two scoliosis. Brilliant. Okay. Careful. Staddle. Okay, blast him. Nice. Did that work? Oh my god, Dunn's on a horse. Oh, that's sick. Hey, we could run circles around it. Like, literally run circles around it. Careful. Careful. Look at him blasting. <laughs> this is exactly the Western fantasy I had in mind. Oh my god. Careful, 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 careful. Don't get too carried away here. Come on, Goopoy Orc. They're so strong. 
It's almost like they're- Oh god, ogres or something! Shit, just go for the melee. Come on, go for the melee. This is a bad idea to get into the melee range of an ogre, but... I need to take him alive. We can't keep building a whole city with a couple of people. We'll hit him then! You can't reach him on the horse. Oh, this is horrible. You know what? Maybe one more shot. Okay, careful, back up. One more shot. Ah, okay. Careful, 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 careful. God damn, this is scary. God damn, this is scary. Oh, be careful. Get him a horse. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Reward everyone. Who thought that fist fighting an ogre was a good idea? Um, Well, the horse is fighting it now. Which I'm not really sure is much of an improvement, to be honest with you. The horse just fucking killed it. The horse just killed it. Mare three, poked goo poyork with a right hoof crushing the orcs, uh, the ogre's torso. Oh, for God's sake. You shit damn horse. Where are you? Where are you? We're renaming you Battle Horse. Maybe that's what we're missing. We need a, a, a whole trained army of battle horses. I can even command them to attack directly. I mean, are you any good at... Okay, you're good at doctoring. You're good at doctoring. We're all right. Everybody's fine. It's all safe. The hell do you mean destroyed? Oh! Oh, come on! Oh, for fuck's sake. All right, well, fair enough. We'll give him a peg like That's fine. Feels a bit more Wild Westy. You know, it's, oh, it's the frontier. It's the frontier, and we got bandits turning up at the front door. You, you got to give a leg for that. Damn you. God damn you. Okay, fine. You know, get him to his bed. The mayor still deserves to have a bedroom. You're not even that bad. This guy's just brood. I have, I have a dream of building a whole city with ogres and imps and fey and Granlin kind and the hussars and everything. Everybody all together. Damn horse kicked my ogre to death. <laughs> well, thank you, battle horse. I should probably be thankful because she's incapable of violence. So if it wasn't for that horse, that would have been an actual game over. We'd have to run around in circles until the damn thing bled out. <sighs> well, I think this is a fantastic start nonetheless. Some might say I've spent 30 minutes building a big empty house. And you're goddamn right I have. And we've tamed like a shitload of animals. Like the ranch is off to an amazing start. We got six muffalo. We've got six horses with another one, two, three, four on the way. Oh, God. We should get rid of one of those stallions, I think. This is this is too much. We got turkeys. I mean, we've got we've got like our proper ranch livestock coming on. Before we wrap things up, this is character development, right? I want to know has relations with Yakov improved a little bit? Do people like him a bit more? He all oh, right. He had a daughter. Okay, we'll keep an eye out for her. She should be out there somewhere in the world. Neutral and oh, she's in the sacrilege. So that's interesting. Uh, Emmy Young, he's actually best friends with now, or not best friends, but very good friends. Plus 100 pin in either way. Still not quite sure of Neville. Why? Oh, because Neville's been trying to romance you. I think Neville really just wants to try his luck a bit, huh? It's a lonely world out here. I get it. And then the wild man is actually friends with them. Are you only good at building wild man? Have I been sleeping on you? No, you're pretty terrible, but you can at least shoot. So you know what? God damn it, let's see if we can get you on board. Dunn should be able to get him in no time. It's gonna be slow going for a while, but hey, I mean, it's base game Brimwall balancing effectively for a little while at least. I'm really interested to see what the Empire mod especially has going for us, because that's something that I've I followed. Obviously, I read like the design doc beforehand and everything else, but I've not actually played it since release, so I'm very, very interested to see what that's got going for us. Thank you for joining me today. Stick with it. This is gonna be a... Uh, it's not gonna be a very long series, I don't think, but it will be slow at the start, and then I think it'll ramp up pretty fast when we start getting access to all the mods, we get the research center and everything else going. I think it's gonna be... I think it's going to be a nice change of pace because it's not going to be such a ridiculous fast pace, right? Biggest thing we might do in an episode is breed a good muffalo, and I'm happy with that. Not in that way. Thank you to, of course, the patrons for making this series possible in the first place. A big thank you goes out to Critical John, Shadow Shall I Lions, Miranda the Mighty, Gigi, Creepy Uncle Dave, The Legend Boss, I Arbor, Selfish Ghost, Time Waster, Erica, Genuine Guy, Cryom, Duck Muck 88, a Red Demon, Zonny the Beard, Kyle Smith, Silent Sentinel, Good Doggo, Hummus, Guts, Meepsicle, Blap the Local Kobold, and Peter Sarossi for their support over Patreon. Thank you for making the channel possible. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being here. Again, I will have a Patreon update video very, very shortly, but well, life's been uh, very busy the last week for reasons that I will explain in that Patreon update video. Thank you for bearing with me nonetheless. Thank you, of course, to Ineffective Guevara, Bucky, Blue J527, Alyssa V, Placion, Status Number One, Small Crackers, Surge. 
Devilez, Lacero, Ashensel, Banana Master, and Andrew James Lejewski as well. Come back. Mm, tomorrow? Probably tomorrow. Almost certainly tomorrow. 